Welcome Conference USA fans, I'm Nicole Cartier and this is Hyphen Nation, connecting you to Conference USA this week. Well, we've got plenty of championship recaps and highlights for you this week, but before we get to the hardware, we have yet another National Player of the Week. SMU Ford Arturo Evo is named College Soccer News National Player of the Week after leading the Mustangs to the CUSA Men's Soccer Championship. Evo scored a hat-trick during the opening round against Marshall and assisted on both SMU goals during the final against UAB. Evo was also named the Offensive MVP of the CUSA Championship. And recapping the men's soccer championship from this past weekend, Evo and teammate Diogo de Almeida received well-deserved Most Valuable Player honors. Evo had a foot in each of the two goals by SMU in the championship match, and de Almeida helped the Mustangs to a clean sheet. The first goal came from a blast by Evo, who sent a direct kick from the right edge of the box that found the foot of forward Ben Hill. Hill redirected the ball into the net for a 1-0 lead. Ben Hill able to turn it through at the back post in a 1-0 lead. The Mustangs got onto the scoreboard again when Aaron Simmons headed home an Evo corner kick in the 59th minute. Oh, it's great. I mean, anytime you uh, you get a chance to get to a final, uh, you're happy. And then, uh, you know, obviously winning it, it we're just ecstatic and, and thought we played good soccer. So we were pretty proud of the boys. SMU earned that automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. CUSA regular season co-champs South Carolina and UAB, as well as UCF, all earned at-large NCAA berths. Also claiming a CUSA trophy this weekend was the Tulsa Hurricane volleyball team. The Hurricane clinched its second regular season title in a row after tough road wins at Rice and Houston. Here's first year head coach Stephen McRoberts. Well, personally, it's uh, you know very gratifying and um, to uh, be able to come in here with the high expectations, uh, being picked first in the conference right off the bat, having that target on us, uh, inheriting a team that went 20 and 0, second round in the NCAA tournament. I mean, the expectations were through the roof. Um, you know, and I know that the team is very proud of uh, winning back-to-back -back conference championships as well. And it hadn't been done, I think, in six or seven years. So uh, again, for them to be able to do it uh, through the transition of a new coaching staff, a new, a new system going from a 5-1 offense to a 6-2 offense, having three new players on the floor, uh, and still be um, you know, in the hunt here for, uh, and a chance to go through the season with only one loss. Um, you know, we're just uh, really excited that, to put another ring on these, these girls' fingers, um, you know, and especially for our two seniors, being able to send them off with two championship rings. I had a sense that the team was going to be really good when I came in and started working them out in the spring. Now, uh, not going through Conference USA, not understanding uh, the landscape of the teams and, and who was coming back for other teams and who they were adding, I had no idea exactly how well we would do in the conference. But as far as the girls' spirit, their competitiveness, uh, you know, and just their, their desire to want to succeed, it was, has been unmatched. Uh, from any team that I've had in 15 years of coaching. And then as we entered this season, uh, running a 5-1 offense, uh, playing you know, a, a top-notch schedule, and, and we dropped a few, uh, you know, having to make that change to a 6-2 was a tough decision, but one that we as coaches thought was gonna be best for the team. And the first week that we did that, uh, beating Middle Tennessee State at Middle Tennessee, uh, beating Cal Poly that week, and then, uh, of course, one of our, our bigger matches when we played at the time number one Illinois and took them all the way to the fifth game, and then having that chance to sweep them in three, I think is when the girls and the coaches all together, it just clicked, and we thought this is going to be a, a, another special year. Uh, for Hurricane Volleyball. Uh, one thing as coaches, we want Tyler to be fresh when the NCAA tournament comes around. And, and I asked her the other day, how are you feeling now compared to last year? She says, I feel so much better. Uh, and she probably feels better mentally too, knowing that she can have an average match, which for a lot of hitters is, is very good. Uh, but know that she has a, a lot of other people on that front line that can pick up the slack. And I've said this all year, 
I think we have the best serve receive um, tandem in the nation. I think uh, Gianna, Kelly, and Jessica Adams, um, you know, are the three, you know, you put those three together and we not only have the best serve receive in the conference, but, but again, I think nationally, I would put them up against anybody. Even when we won Friday night and knew that we had clinched against Rice, um, as soon as we kind of got done with about a two minute celebration, one of the players spoke up and said, we want to go 19 and one. We're not done. And so even in that setting, we still have players stepping up and saying, we want to keep winning. Even though we've clinched, we know kind of already what's coming in the future. We do have things that are sitting in our way that that kind of worked to our benefit to have some motivation. Well, we've seen some great football this year with two teams already ranked in the top 25, a Heisman candidate and four teams already going bowling. But who is going to be your CUSA football champion? Here we have Russ Anderson, assistant commissioner, to tell us a little bit about who's in contention for this year's championship. Russ, explain to us a little bit about who's still in contention for the division title. Well, in the East Division, Southern Miss is one win away from clinching the division title and earning a spot in the championship game. Over in the West, we've got a great battle with Tulsa and Houston. They're both undefeated, uh, and uh, they play each other the last week of the season. So actually, regardless of what both of those teams do this weekend, that Tulsa-Houston game on November 25th will be a winner-take-all for the West Division crown. Well, to host the championship, you have the best. It goes to the team with the best record in conference play, and so if uh, Houston and Tulsa both win this weekend, then their head-to-head -head matchup on the 25th will determine not only the West Division crown but who will host the championship. And what is there a possibility for a tie? What happens if there is a complete tie and everything? Um, as far as hosting wise. Yep. If, uh, if one of those teams were to stumble and still win the division at seven and one and Southern Miss is seven and one, they did not play each other. So it would go to BCS ranking. So if it's Houston and Southern Miss, it goes to BCS ranking. If Tulsa and Southern Miss are both seven and one, it goes to the BCS ranking. Um, in this week's rankings, for instance, Houston is 11, Southern Miss is 20 and Tulsa is 31. Uh, so we should, we'll have a clear de definition no matter what, if we end up with two teams tied at seven and one, and who will get to host the event. Perfect. Everybody, check for that Tulsa-Houston game on that Friday after Thanksgiving, and we will see who is going to be your East and West Division titles here shortly. Everybody, mark December 3rd on your calendars for this USA Football Championship. Th thank you very much, Russ. Thank you. And we've got plenty of NCAA postseason action for you. Big congratulations to our women's soccer teams at Memphis and UCF who advanced in the NCAA tournament. Memphis advances after an impressive 7-0 win over UT Martin. They play longtime rival Louisville this Friday at the Mike Rose Soccer Complex. The UCF Knights proceed in the bracket after a 2-0 win against FIU. They travel to Florida on Friday. This concludes this episode of Hyphen Nation. We will be taking next week off in honor of Thanksgiving, but we'll be back in action December 1st with complete football championship breakdown, highlights, and interviews, as well as plenty of basketball to keep you full for the holidays. I'm Nicole Cartier for the Conference USA Digital Network.